Mr. President, I um, intend to address the Senate on the topic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, but I, I want to uh, uh, observe that the distinguished majority leader may be coming in uh, in just a moment for a unanimous consent request. And if he does, I'll be happy to yield uh, uh, during the middle of my remarks so that he can take care of that item of business. But uh, it is important for this Senate and this country to once again be interested in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, during my time in Congress, and particularly since joining the U.S. Helsinki Commission, which I now chair, um, the Western Balkans have been an ongoing concern of mine. And although our relationship with all of these countries in the Western Balkan is important, the United States has a, has a specific interest, a particular interest, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and we need to concentrate more on that. I had the opportunity in July to lead a nine-member uh, bicameral delegation to Bosnia. The delegation sought to see more of the country and to hear from its citizens rather than meets only in the offices of senior Bosnian officials. We visited the small town of Trebjana in the entity of Republika Srpska, and we visited the city of Mostar in the entity of the Federation. And then we went on uh, and visited in Sarajevo, the capital, engaging with international officials, the Bosnian presidency, and citizens seeking a better Bosnia. Bosnia was a U.S. foreign policy priority when I came to the House in 1995. In less than a decade, Bosnia had gone from international acclaim while hosting the Winter Olympics to the scene of the worst carnage and human suffering in Europe since World War II. The conflict that erupted in Bosnia in 1992 was not internally generated. Rather, Bosnia became the victim of the breakup of Yugoslavia and the extreme nationalist forces that this breakup unleashed, unleashed throughout the region, first and foremost by Serbian leader and war criminal Slobodan Milosevic. And at this point, Mr. President, I would be happy to yield to the distinguished majority leader for uh, whatever purposes he would choose. Back to the subject of Bosnia. The carnage and uh, tragic conflict that occurred in the early 90s was about more than Bosnia. It was about security in a Europe just emerging from its Cold War divisions and the international principles upon which that security was based. For that reason, the United States, under President Bill Clinton, rightly exercised leadership when Europe asks, asked us to, having failed to do so themselves. The Clinton administration brokered the Dayton Peace Agreement in November 1995 and enabled NATO to engage in peacemaking and peacekeeping to preserve Bosnia's unity and territorial integrity. That was the Bosnian Peace Agreement. Almost a quarter of a century later, after the expenditure of significant diplomatic, military, and foreign assistance resources, the physical scars of the conflict have been largely erased. But as we learned during our recent visit, the country remains far short of the prosperous democracy we hoped it would become and that its people deserve. Most are a sp spectacular city to visit, remains ethnically divided with Bosniak and Croat students separated by ethnicity in schools, even inside the same school buildings. Bosnian citizens who are of minority groups, such as Jews or Romanis, or of mixed heritage, still cannot run for certain political offices. This is 2018, Mr. President. They can't run for state-level presidency simply because of their ethnicity. 
Neither can Bosniaks and Croats in Republika Srpska or Serbs in the Bosnian Federation run for the presidency. Because of their ethnicity in Europe in 2018, nor can those numerous citizens who on principle refuse to declare their ethnicity because it should not replace their real qualifications for holding office. This goes on despite repeated rulings by the European Court of Human Rights that this flaw in the Dayton negotiated constitution must be corrected. In total, well over 300,000 people in a country of only 3.5 million fall into these categories despite what is likely their strong commitment to the country and to its future as a multi-ethnic state. This is simply wrong and it needs to end. In addition, youth employment in Bosnia is among the highest in the world and many who can leave the country are doing so, finding a future in Europe, or finding a future here in the United States. This denies Bosnia much of its needed talent and energy. Civil society is kept on the sidelines. Decisions in Bosnia are being made by political party leaders who are not accountable to the people. They're the decision makers. The people should be decision makers. Corruption is rampant. Ask anyone in Europe and they will tell you that Bosnia's wealth and potential is being stolen by corruption. General elections will be held in October, Mr. President, with a system favoring the status quo and resistance to electoral reforms that would give Bosnians more rather than fewer choices. The compromises made two and a half decades ago in Dayton to restore peace and give the leading ethnic groups, Bosniaks, Serbs, and Croats, an immediate sense of security make governance dysfunctional today. Two and a half decade old agreements make governance inefficient today in Bosnia. Collective privileges for these groups come at the expense of the individual human rights of the citizens who are all but coerced into making ethnic identity their paramount concern and a source of division when so many other common interests should unite them. Ethnically based political parties benefit as they engage in extensive patronage and corruption. Beneath the surface, ethnic reconciliation has not taken hold and resulting tensions could still destabilize the country and even lead to violence. Malign outside forces, particularly Vladimir Putin's Russia, but also influences from Turkey and Gulf states seek to take advantage of the political impasse and malaise, steering the country away from its European and Euro-Atlantic aspirations. So as a, a result of these developments, Bosnia and Herzegovina is not making much progress, even as its neighbors join NATO and join the EU or make progress toward their desired integration. In my view, we should rightly credit the Dayton Agreement for restoring peace to Bosnia. That was 25 years ago. But it is regrettable that the negotiators did not put an expiration date on ethnic accommodations so that Bosnia could become a modern democracy. As one of our interlocutors told us, the international community, which has substantial powers in Bosnia, has steadily withdrawn, turning over decision-making to Bosnian officials who were not yet committed to making the country work and naively hoping the promise of future European integration would encourage responsible behavior. That has not happened, Mr. President. Of course, we can't turn back the clock. We can't insert that expiration date on the Dayton Agreement. But having made a difference in 1995, we can and should help make a difference again today, and it is in our national security interest that we do so. I suggest the following. The United States and our European friends should state unequivocally that Dayton is an absolute baseline, which means only forward progress should be allowed. 
separation or new entities should be declared to be clearly out of the question. Secondly, U.S. policymakers should also remind everyone that the international community, including NATO, did not relinquish its powers to Bosnia, but simply has chosen to withdraw and exercise them less robustly. We should seek an agreement to resurrect the will to use these powers and to do so with a resolve if growing tensions make renewed violence a credible possibility. Next, the United States and Europe should adopt a policy of imposing sanctions on individual Bosnian officials who are clearly engaged in corruption or who ignore the Dayton parameters, Bosnian law and court rulings in their work. Washington has already done this regarding Republika Srpska President Milorad Dodik. And just recently, Nikola Spirich, a member of Bosnia's House of Representatives. However, the scope should be expanded and European capitals need to join us in this regard. Senior U.S. officials, as well as members of Congress, should make Sarajevo a priority. I hope more of our members will visit Bosnia and increase our visibility, demonstrate our continued commitment, and enhance our understanding. Bosnia may not be ready to join NATO, but its membership action plan should be activated without further delay. As soon as this year's elections are over in Bosnia, the international community should encourage the quick formation of new parliaments and governments at all levels, followed immediately by vigorous reform efforts that eliminate the discrimination in the criteria for certain offices, ensure that law enforcement more effectively serves and protects all residents, and end the corruption in health care and so many other vital areas of daily life. Our policy must shift back to an emphasis on universal principles of individual human rights and citizen-based government. Indeed, the privileges Dayton accorded to the three main ethnic groups are not rights, but privileges that should not be upheld at the expense of genuine democracy and individual rights. We, in my view, have been far too fatalistic about accepting in Bosnia what we are not willing to accept anywhere else. We also underestimate what Bosnians might find acceptable, and we should be encouraging them to support leaders based on credentials, positions, and personal integrity, not based on ethnicity. There should no longer be a reason why a Bosniak, Serb, or Croat voter should be prohibited by law from considering a candidate of another ethnicity or a multi-ethnic political party. All candidates and parties would do well to seek votes from those not belonging to a single ethnic group. This may take time and perhaps some effort, but it should happen sooner rather than later. Let me conclude, Mr. President, by asserting that greater engagement uh, is in the interest of the United States, the economic interest and the national security interest. Our country is credited with Bosnia's preservation after the country was almost destroyed by aggression, ethnic cleansing, and genocide. And thank God our country was there for Bosnia. Our adversaries, notably but not exclusively Russia, would like nothing more than to make an American effort fail in the end. And they would ensure its repercussions are felt elsewhere around the globe. Current trends in Bosnia make the country an easier entry point for extremism in Europe, including Islamic extremism. If we wait for discrimination and ethnic tensions to explode again, our engagement will then become a moral imperative at significantly greater cost. The people of Bosnia, like their neighbors throughout the Balkans, know they are in Europe, but consider the United States their most trusted friend, their most honest friend. They want our presence and engagement, and given the tragedies they experience, they have earned our support and friendship. Mr. President, I yield the floor.